What's your, your goal here tonight by, by coming to a state where we don't get a lot of presidential candidates? Uh, we think every state matters. We think Massachusetts matters. And when you look at the state of our country, I mean, our country is in disarray. The world is on fire. And there's never been a time where we needed a new generational leader that leaves the negativity and the baggage behind and really starts focusing on solutions for the future for the American people. And as the country is more divided and all of this anger around, we've got to start going towards something that's positive, something that's hopeful. And you've got to start focusing on the debt because everybody's feeling their dollars aren't going as far. They're seeing it in their grocery bills, they're seeing it in their utility bills, but they're also seeing it in the fact that only 31% of eighth graders in our country or proficient in reading. We've got a completely open border. I know the state of Massachusetts is dealing with it in a big way. That needs to be dealt with. We've got lawlessness in our cities and we've got wars around the world. And now's the time where we've really got to make sure that we put in some good energy to get that done. The immigration issue is a big one in Massachusetts, as you say. We're also a state where voters tend to favor abortion rights. Um, you're a, a pro-life candidate. I know we just had the, the IVF ruling mm -hmm. or the embryos ruling out of Alabama. Are you concerned that that discussion of that ruling is going to put independent voters off of off of Republican candidates or pro-life candidates like yourself? I am personally pro-life, but I will tell you, we have got to stop demonizing this issue. We have to humanize this issue. I think it was right when unelected justices no longer controlled this and it was put in the hands of the people. So the states are deciding, I think we need to respect that. But when it comes to a federal law, in order to pass a federal law, it takes a majority of the House, 60 Senate votes and a signature of a president. We haven't had 60 Republican senators in over 100 years. We may have 45. So no Republican president can ban abortions any more than a Democrat president can ban state laws. So what can we do? I think we need to find consensus. Let's just agree to ban late-term abortions. Let's encourage adoptions. Let's say doctors and nurses who don't believe in abortion shouldn't have to perform them. Let's make sure contraception is accessible. And let's make sure no state says to a woman who's had an abortion that she's going to jail or getting the death penalty. Let's just start there. I don't want to see this issue demonized anymore. Democrats put fear in women. Republicans use judgment in women. It is too personal of an issue to use either one. And when it comes to IVF, I had the reason I'm pro-life is not because the Republican Party tells me to be. My husband was adopted, but I had problems having both of my children. Both of our children came from fertility. And so I know the value of IVF, and we want to make sure that IVF is, is, is accessible to every family that wants it. And we want to make sure that those decisions on what happens with those embryos is between the physician and the parents. We don't need government telling the physician or parents how they need to be on this. We need to make sure that that stays accessible, but that the embryos are respected. So we're going to be one of several states that are going to the polls on Tuesday. People in Massachusetts are already voting. What does, uh, what does success look like for you on Super Tuesday? We want to be competitive. You know, you'll see in the rally we are having thousands of people show up to see us, and it's because they don't want two 80-year-old candidates to choose from. They don't want any more of this chaos. They realize it's time for a next generation. And I also think this is about our kids and people's grandkids. Look at the younger generation, what they've been through. They went through COVID, which was traumatic. They worry about what this $34 trillion of debt's gonna mean in their lives. They worry about getting a job. They worry about making ends meet. They don't think they're ever gonna own a home. They worry about wars breaking out. And all of that is under an umbrella of anger and division. And then we wonder why there's so much anxiety, stress, and depression. This gener younger generation deserves to know what normal feels like. And that's what we're trying to do is say, let's go forward in a way that they can feel that, not the chaos of Joe Biden and the fact that, you know, he's allowing millions of illegal immigrants to come in without anybody stopping them, not with the chaos of Donald Trump, where he continues to call names and, and criticize the military and side with dictators. We just need to bring normal back to America so that we can let our kids see the American dream again. And that's but what Republican I'm trying to do. Republican voters do seem to be breaking in favor of Donald Trump so far. How do you... Can you turn that narrative around at this point? Well, I think if you look in all the early states, while Donald Trump won, he didn't get 40% of the vote. If you look in Michigan, Donald Trump's been campaigning there for eight years. I campaigned there for two days and we got 30% of the vote. If you look at the size of the rallies, these are not people who are anti-Trump. These are people who are pro-America. 
and they want to see an America that they can be proud of. They want to see an America that does have the American dream, and they don't like the America that Joe Biden and Donald Trump have given them. And so we're giving them an option. We're giving them a choice. They're not going anywhere. They very much want to make sure their voices are heard, and they very much don't want to be pushed into what they have to do or how they have to do it, because they believe that America is better than this. So you've said repeatedly that you wouldn't be Donald Trump's vice president. Is there anything that would change your mind about that? No. I mean, I, I think I've made it very clear I'm not running for vice president. I think I've made it clear this isn't about a political future. If it was, I would have been out a long time ago. This is about the fact that we have a country to save. This is about the fact that we can't continue to be living like this. It's not normal. This isn't helpful to our kids. We are better than this. This is about preventing war. This is about securing our borders. This is about getting our kids reading again. This is about making sure that taxpayers have more money and not keep forking it over to government. We've got to start writing this ship. And right now, I'll tell you, this ship has a hole in it. Donald Trump is that hole. If Republicans go along with Donald Trump and ignore it, we're going to go down with the ship. If we go in a new direction, I think we can lift up all Americans in a way that people can be strong and proud again. And, and where do you go after Tuesday? What, what's next for your campaign after this, this blitz over the next few days? Our goal is to keep going. We're running through the tape. So we're you know, hoping that we're going to be as competitive as possible on Super Tuesday. That's the goal. And then we just keep going from there. We always look at one state at a time, one, one election at a time. So we're going to keep doing that. Do you think you're running a, a general election campaign at this point, or are you really trying to appeal to those registered Republican voters? I mean, if you look even in South Carolina, only 5% were Democrats. I mean, these are Republicans. These are not, these are Republicans who feel like the party has left them. These are independents who are bigger numbers than we've ever seen. And these are Democrats who believe the Democrat party has left them. And they are all coming together to say, no more, we want better. And it's working. And so we continue to appreciate the crowds that are coming, but we appreciate more their message, which is they see hope in a new generation and they don't want to go with Joe Biden or Donald Trump. You mentioned South Carolina, tough loss for you in your home state. How do you, you know, those are voters who have known you best, mm -hmm. probably. How do you uh, pitch yourself to, to the voters who don't know you in light of that? Well, I think if you ask South Carolinians, they'll tell you I was a fantastic governor. But this is a change that we're seeing in the Republican Party. I believe government needs to be smaller. I believe that we need to have more economic freedom. I believe that we need to pay down our debts. Donald Trump is the opposite of that. He grew government. He didn't clean up the agencies. He put us $8 trillion in debt in four years. So all of those things are totally opposite. I believe national security should be peace through strength. I think that comes when you have more people as allies than less. I think that comes when you're more together. Donald Trump wants to be isolationist. He thinks we don't need friends. I think America can never be so arrogant to think we don't need friends. I think that we need to have a Republican Party structure where you go and focus on winning races. Donald Trump has now made the RNC just about him and to where it's, you know, he spent $60 million in campaign contributions on his own personal court cases. None of that is what I believe. So we are very different as you look at this Republican primary. And that's what we're telling the American people is we can do better than what Donald Trump or Joe Biden gives us. Do you think it's Trump the man or do you think this is just where the Republican Party is now with his influence baked into it? I think the Republican Party has become about one man. And what I am saying is we need to start focusing about the American people, not Donald Trump. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.